Toodaloo. You finally arrived. There's no time to spare, so we'll begin with our first lesson. Wait, hold on. There's something we need to clear up first. Otherwise, it'll keep bugging us. <sighs> so that's still on your mind, huh? Maybe you're the ones who can't let things go. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a time and place for exacting vengeance. Besides, I'm not in the mood for any right now. Best save it for later. Uh... You need to be in the right mood for vengeance! I already have a long list of vengeance to exact. Even if I wanted to begin now, I'd have to start in the right order. Who knows how long it will be before I get to you. <laughs> well, if you have so much to take care of, wouldn't it just be easier to give us a clean slate? Absolutely not! Stealing my targets, calling me a ruthless ruler, and suspecting my uncle. All worthy of vengeance in my eyes. But you needn't worry, at least not whilst we're investigating this matter. I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, a man of moral integrity fears no slanderous attack. If Uncle Schubert didn't commit any wrongdoing, then any such investigation will prove fruitless. But if he did commit a wrongful act, then he should bear the full punishment. I'm sure you understand. Good. Now, there are two key points that aristocrats attach great importance to. Your manner of speech, and your bearing. Let's begin with your manner of speech. Aristocrats have a very unique way of carrying conversation, even with mundane daily topics. Oh, Paimon's already learned some unique conversation! Mark my words! Vengeance will be mine! <sighs> Not even close. And besides, it sounds strange. Hey! Paimon learned it from you! And didn't you say not to call others strange? It seems you don't respect the rules of your own clan! No, I've no need to trouble myself with such frivolous formalities. Here, allow me to demonstrate. For example, when greeting a friend, you could say, As the morning dew greets the coming dawn, so do I greet you, my dear friend. Uh, as the morning dew does what now? However, such a phrase may only be used during the morning hours. Also, the party with whom you're speaking must be of approximately the same status as you. Morning dew is not uncommon, so it expresses that friendship should not be measured by value, yet also suggests that friendship between aristocrats is pure like water. Oh, no, no, no. You must be prudent with your words. Calling someone a good friend could easily offend them. Uh, but didn't you just say my dear friend in your example? Paimon's confused. Yes, I did. But you must know in the Lawrence family, dear friend is a set phrase that can only be used towards certain friends with whom one is acquainted, but not particularly close. It sounds much more pleasant to call an acquaintance a dear friend. So, another thing to remember. Aristocrats are concerned with face and being polite. However, if you were to use dear friend to address an intimate friend, the recipient would think that you were deliberately trying to estrange them. This is only the first step in making a greeting. After addressing one another, you then exchange courtesies. Wait, wait! This is all too abstract! Um, perhaps it would be better if you gave some real-life demonstrations ah very well come with me we'll choose some bystanders to converse with oh you're Eula of the Lawrence clan right this can't be good <clears throat> you there lowly laborer 
You stand in the presence of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. I have words for you. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility... Uh... What comes next? Uh... Oh, right. By solemnly kneeling to the ground with utmost sincerity. Huh? I can't make heads or tails of anything you're saying. <sighs> Hold on. What did they always teach me? Whenever a dispute arises, protection of your family's prestige and dignity always takes precedence. <sighs> Got it. <clears throat> As a lowly commoner, you shall maintain absolute reverence when speaking with those under which you so graciously toil. How dare you speak in such a manner? Ugh, is everyone from the Lawrence clan so strange? The days of the Lawrence clan's tyranny have long passed. I don't care what you're trying to do. Just beat it. Like I said, I don't care what you're doing. I have nothing to say to any member of the Lawrence clan. And here's a word of advice. I wouldn't be caught dead walking too closely with any one of their like in Mondstadt. If that's all, I'll be going. I'm afraid I won't be able to control myself if we talk any longer. Uh, hey! Hey! Don't leave! Uh, halt! Oh, mark my words. Vengeance will be mine! Wow. The Lawrence name really does carry a terrible reputation. <sighs> Never mind him. I could have predicted as much. Let's find someone else. You there, lowly toiler. You stand in the presence of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. I have words for you. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility, and solemnly kneel to the ground with utmost sincerity. <sighs> huh? Why don't you respond? According to the custom, I must wait until you kneel completely before I can say the next words. Ah, right. I mustn't look at you too long, or I'll be drawing more attention to our difference in status. Oh dear, I've already stared at you for quite a while. <sighs> Fine. You may spare yourself the formality of kneeling, as it may be a little inconvenient. I shall continue. Oh, wait. I think there's a line for people with rude attitudes in this situation. Hey! Stop bothering me or else I might say something you wouldn't like to hear. Then again, I've got no words for anyone from the Lawrence clan. Again? What's with this attitude? Yes, I don't think his attitude will change. If I keep grandstanding like this, the outcome won't be good. Let's try to find someone else to talk- hm. I'll remember your unwillingness to comply. Mark my words, vengeance will be mine! You there, lowly worker. I- yeah, I've already heard it all before. Look, just spare me the time. Our answer's always the same. We've got nothing to say to the likes of you. I mean, seriously, can't you just take a hint? Please calm down. We don't want to cause any trouble. Ah, I know she's a knight of Favonius, and that the knights wouldn't misplace their trust, but the name Lawrence carries too much weight with it. Even to this very day, the descendants of the Lawrence clan are still scheming to reclaim Mondstadt and reinstate their aristocratic rule. And if that wasn't enough, here you are purposefully using their awkward way of speaking just to put on an act? Don't you care for the feelings of us ordinary folk? You have a point. But mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. <laughs> huh? You want to fight? Listen here, I may be no match for you, but I'll be sure to lodge a complaint with the Knights of Favonius. I'm sorry, but I want her to understand that I'm serious. 
listen here. If you don't want things to get more unpleasant, then you'd better just stop. Forget it. There's no point in quarreling any further. Let's go. <sighs> it's all right. This happens quite often. Let's find someone else to talk to. Uh, Paimon thinks we've seen enough now. Let's just stop. Actually, Paimon thinks we should apologize for asking you to demonstrate for us. We had no idea the feelings between the Lawrence clan and the people of Mondstadt were so bitter. <laughs> what can we do? The Lawrence name is already a dirty word among every household in Mondstadt. Even three-year-olds know the story. <sighs> Don't worry. What with me being a knight of Favonius, they're usually willing to speak a few words with me. Perhaps my aristocratic manner of speech provoked them today. Believe me, it's not a big issue. So this is the way things are normally for you? There's no need for them to direct their anger at you personally. That's the way things are. Perhaps it's just fate for those who have made mistakes. Accepting punishment is only fair, right? But when your family has committed atrocities, I'm afraid there's no easy path to reconciliation. As memories are carried in the city breeze, the faults of such grievances are passed from one generation to the next. It is now my turn to bear this burden. At least I have a means of living a relatively normal life compared to the elders of my family. I have nothing to be discontented about. Yeah! Why were you so willing to try and demonstrate for us? Oh, that reminds me. That last person will not escape my vengeance either. <sighs> Let's leave it at that. Just think of it as something I like to do. But unfortunately, you probably didn't learn much from those conversations. It seems we have no other choice but to find more people to talk to. Uh, no need! Besides, the Traveler's pretty sharp, and nothing gets in our way on an adventure. Paimon thinks we got the gist of it now. Right? Right? We'll just have to roll with it for now. Let's just keep Eula from getting anyone else riled up. Well then, I'm glad you learned something. You're already halfway toward mastering aristocratic conduct. A proper manner of speech is more aesthetic than anything else. It stems from their taste for refinement. But we must also practice your bearing. I have a very effective way of training for this. Come with me to Dragonspine. I always see these non-sentient kitsune pouncing headfirst into the snow, scavenging for food. Hmm? You'd like to see me do that? Haha, <laughs> I'm sure you would. If you wish to truly achieve the dignified conduct of an aristocrat, you must learn to remain composed and elegant even amidst harsh conditions. For example, you can see that part of the path up ahead is quite difficult to traverse. But a well-trained aristocrat would not only effortlessly proceed forward, but do so without a stain on their garment and their elegance fully intact. Paimon thinks we've left the realm of aristocrats and entered the realm of adventuring. Compared to what we've already seen, this should be a piece of cake! Uh-huh! This is where you can finally apply some of your adventuring knowledge! <laughs> you look pretty confident this time. Alright, let's get started. Remember, you must be graceful and elegant. Don't get knocked or launched into the air. That would be most unsightly.
won't do. <laughs> It'll be difficult at first. Remember, you must be elegant. Don't get knocked or launched into the air. Not bad. A lot better than I had anticipated, at least. <sighs> I almost didn't make it through! Whew. Good thing we didn't get stuck. Um, so, are we aristocrats now? <laughs> Don't flatter yourselves. We've only just begun. This scenario was relatively simple. In the face of a real battle, one would seldom have a chance to stop and evaluate the situation. There's a leyline monolith just up ahead that will attract nearby monsters. True elegance is the ability to calmly yet swiftly make decisions in the heat of battle. My family set only the highest expectations for me, even as a child. Let's proceed, shall we? This is the Leyline Monolith. Go ahead, activate it. But be careful not to get launched into the air or frozen while fighting. That would be most unsightly. Right here. Rain outlines your fate. Now you've got my attention. Right now. Right here. Right now. Huh? <laughs> right here. Right now. Ha! I'm always watching. Ugh. You failed this time. What a shame. But not to worry. It's just training after all. Let's try again. <laughs> right here. Right now. Right here. Emerge. No, my sword. Right here. <laughs> right now. Right here. Emerge. Show them. <laughs> right now. Emerge. Right here. <laughs> right now. Right here. <laughs> right now. Emerge.
Well done. Your performance was most impressive. And you managed to remain calm even in these grueling dragonspine surroundings. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if even I could have done the same. Given such an outstanding performance, it seems there is little left for me to teach you. Like Paimon said, adventuring is our specialty! Uh, <laughs> so, that's it for our training, right? Then let's get out of Dragonspine before Paimon turns into a popsicle! Hold on. I was commending the Traveler's performance just now. You, on the other hand, seem to have made no progress at all. Uh, what? You mean Paimon was also part of the training? Yes, of course. You were frantically flying and dashing about throughout the entire thing. Not an elegant sight at all. Did you even listen to anything I was trying to teach you? Uh, hey! That's not true! Paimon was just focusing on you the whole time! Whatever the reason, not heeding my instructions. A cause for vengeance, perhaps. <sighs> now, drink this. Huh? What is it? <gasps> Are you trying to poison Paimon? Certainly not. It's warm milk. Didn't you just say that you were freezing? Drink it and it'll help warm you up. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, are you still planning on the whole vengeance thing? If I wasn't, then why would I care about you being cold? If you turned into a Paimon popsicle, that would ruin my plans for vengeance now, wouldn't it? So, dear friend, don't die on me out here. All in the name of vengeance. No need to thank me. Now then, given that your training is complete, it's time we return to Mondstadt. Our last step will be preparing a cordial gift to present to my uncle when you meet him. I already have something in mind. Let's pay Sarah a visit at Good Hunter. I see you've met the honorary knight. We meet again, Amber. Seems we're just bad to run into you these days. Well, I just got back and was thinking about grabbing a bite at Good Hunter. But now that you're here, why don't we all eat together? Very well. It's been some time since we've last shared a meal together. Come, take a seat. We can discuss my uncle's gift while we eat. Yes? Is there something else you'd like to order? Could you please prepare a serving of my uncle's favorite, Gebrotinus Fleisch mit Sauerkraut? We'll take it as a gift to him later. Coming right up! <laughs> It'll take some time to prepare. I'll have it here at the counter once it's ready. Uh, hold on a moment. Is this satisfying salad also something that Amber ordered? No, she didn't order it. But because she didn't order any vegetables, I thought I'd throw in a salad on the house. You know, to contrast all the meat dishes. So... We clearly didn't order this, yet you prepared it without authorization. <laughs> Mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. Uh, you're gonna take revenge on her for giving us a free salad? Hmm, you should know me by now. That's the kind of villainous character I am. Well then, uh, please wait a moment while I get the dish for your uncle started. <laughs> Delicious unauthorized delicacies. Sarah will pay for this. Choose get brought to this Fleischmitt sauerkraut as a gift for your uncle. Hyman's never even heard that dish before. This dish isn't actually on Good Hunter's menu. Only long standing patrons such as my uncle would know about the dish. The old aristocrats seem to take a liking to it. Because of the sour flavor of the sauerkraut, not too many people are fond of it these days. I guess it's become less popular over time. Eula treated me to the dish once, and I couldn't even finish a bite. I've nicknamed it Gebratenes Fleischmitt Vengeance ever since. Ugh. I never expected us to have such completely different tastes in food. If I weren't in such a good mood, I'd say that constitutes grounds for transgression. Of course not. It's hard to find someone in Mondstadt that attracts contempt as much as she does. 
<laughs> it's fine when you're just joking between us, but I'm afraid our honorary knight might misunderstand you. Eula's always talking about vengeance, but that's just how she is. It's nothing you should take too seriously. But I am serious, and I'll remember every transgression committed against me. Ugh, it's no wonder so many people dislike you. Paimon's starting to realize that Eula is actually a very good person. There's no need to be so awkward when you want to say something nice. <sighs> Listen, you've never been labeled as a social pariah, have you? Uh, well, no? So that's why you wouldn't understand how hard it is for a bad person to try to be good. It's impossible for me, and I have no intention of acting like a good person. Alright, no need to look so sullen. I'm just kidding. Come on, let's eat. The food is getting cold. I'm stuffed. I'll see Sarah about the bill. No need. I've left the mora under the plate. If you try to settle it with her in person, she won't accept payment for the salad. Don't underestimate my ability to exact revenge. <laughs> Sarah won't get the upper hand this time. All right. Next, you should pay my uncle a visit. He has a small camp at the top of the mountain near Springvale. He usually whiles his time away there when there's nothing else to do. Uh... Aren't you coming with us, Yua? I'm afraid that wouldn't be very convenient for me. It'd be better if you two went alone. Ah, yes. Please do remember to pick up the dish from Sarah. I still have more recon to do in the wilderness. Well, until next time! Let's meet again. What an interesting bunch you are. Here! The Gabratinus Fleischmitz sauerkraut is ready to go! <laughs> be sure to eat it while it's hot, otherwise the flavor will be spoiled. And by the way, don't worry too much when Eula says strange things. She's actually a very good person. Paimon's been meaning to ask. No one could stand the sight of Eula when she was trying to speak with the others in Mondstadt earlier. But she seemed to get along fine with you and Amber just now. What's up with that? The people of Mondstadt don't take kindly to anyone bearing the Lawrence name. They are unable to see past her family, therefore they don't actually see Eula for herself. So no matter what Eula tries to do, it's seen as a wrongdoing. It essentially strips the meaning of anything she tries to accomplish. How come you're able to see Eula differently then? Well, when she joined the Knights of Favonius, it caused quite an uproar. Many people signed a petition demanding that the Knights reverse their decision. At the same time, numerous members of the Lawrence clan crowded the entrance of the Knights of Favonius headquarters, clamoring for Eula to give an explanation. Oh, so both sides were unhappy. That's right. So you can imagine how determined Eula must have been under such circumstances. But thanks to Grandmaster Varka and the unwavering attitudes of others in the Knights of Favonius, they were able to quell the unrest. Tensions still remain beneath the surface, I'm afraid. In the eyes of the people, she's a stain on the Knights of Favonius. And in the eyes of the Lawrence clan, she's a disgrace to her family. But she simply fulfills her duty as a knight, silently helping one person after another, myself included. People like Eula should be approached with care and understanding. She could stand to be treated a little more fairly. I believe a day will come when things will get better. Once everything's settled, we should go talk to Yula again. Paimon thinks we know how to communicate with her now. I'm glad. I think that would make her very happy. Though, she might not ever admit it. Take care. Please come again.